Hello, hello everyone. Uh, my name is James, James Wong, and uh, my teammate Carol Gavestick is here. We uh, welcome you guys to join our session today. And today we talk, we talk about automation, we talk about how to use AI to help our work, to make our life easier, All right? So um, uh, just a couple questions to get to know you a little bit. Uh, who has done, who, who is in this DevOps um, segment or, yeah, okay, awesome, cool. And the system of admin, right? Something along the line. How about who has who have used some kind of automation tool in your daily day to day operation? Okay, cool. That's the norm here. <laughs> and um, who has used Ansible? Wow. Okay, we got a big group of fans here. <laughs> that's a, that's that's easier. So um, what we're going to cover today is. Uh, a little bit brief introduction, just in case we have some new, newly joined uh, industry. We talk a little bit on the infrastructure as code and Ansible, and then we jump into Lightspeed, um, how it helped us to solve our day-to-day -day, um, uh, uh, problems or make it easier for us to work do our work. And then we will talk about uh, the new, newly open-sourced AI Ansible AI Connect. Right, and we have some demonstration in between. Uh, just one more question then. Anyone used Lightspeed here? Okay, a little bit. Okay, cool. Then I think we hit the right spot here. So infrastructure as code. Basically, you manage, you provision your infrastructure by using some code, right? Programming code. The nice thing about this is that so that you could use automation tools to manage your infrastructure, um, that would take us out of the troubles of tedious work, you know, toils or human mistakes, you know, typing wrong keys and remove the whole system directory, something like that, right? And then with, once your infrastructure is managed by code, uh, apply GitOps, right? So that you could, you know, your infrastructure version controlled, uh, store in a version controlled system so that you know exactly at which point in time when you apply the system at which state, right? So that allow you to repeat and predictable to, to, to create your infrastructure with predict uh, predictability. So, Ansible playbook, you, know, you guys, a bunch of, most of you know about Ansible, so you probably know already. It's YAML based, and it's very simple and intuitive to human eyes, easy to, for us to consume what this playbook is trying to do. And it's a declaration of your intended states on all your systems or objects. And uh, it's idempotent, meaning that when you reapply the playbook again and again, it will have the same outcome. Uh, if something got changed, it will be reverted by this playbook. And then the last of all, the nice thing about Ansible is that it's agentless. You do not need to install an agent on the system that you want to control. Uh, basically, you use SSH to control it, and so that it's a lot easier to manage, lower cost in terms of maintenance. So this is a uh, snippet of a playbook. And here you can see there are three tasks in this playbook. And if you just read it, you could easily understand what's going on here. The first, first task, that name is a description that is purely for human eyes consumption. So this first task is to install Postgres server package. And now after the name, the, basically the three lines, is telling the Ansible engine saying that what to do. Basically, we're telling it that use a package or a module, which is called ansible.building.package. And this package or this module, we call it module, this module would take in some parameters. For example, the, the first one would be the name. And this is a, telling the module saying that do something with the Postgres server package. And then the next one, state, it says present, meaning that you could probably guess it, right? 
we want Ansible to ensure that this particular Postgres package present on this target system that we are managing. And then the next task is saying that start a service. And if you look at it, it uses a module called Ansible built-in service module and give, him, give it the parameter, hey, manage this process. This service is called Postgres SQL and make sure the state is started. Right? So pretty easy to understand. If you, even if you don't know Ansible or YAML, you read it, you probably can make a good guess of what this playbook is about. And then lastly, you want to open up the firewall port, port to this Postgres server. And similarly, you use a module, but this time it's a module called firewall. And it will basically open up the port 5432 on TCP and make sure it's permanently enabled and immediately taking effect. So with these three tasks, you basically make Ansible to do the work for you by ensure that this particular system will have the Postgres uh, package installed and the service started, and also that the service port is opened up to allow access so that application can make use of it. So this is the Ansible playbook. It's, it's pretty easy to understand for us. And, um, and, and it's, it's very declarative. You tell it what state you want the object or the system to be at. Now, it's nice, but you still need to learn, right? And then you still need to remember what kind of module to use and what parameters you want to, you need to pass it to it. Right? So still, it takes some time to get used to it. It takes some years or maybe months of experience to get to remember some of these things. So, so when you are writing up the playbook, so that you can come up with a nice playbook to do what you want it to do. So now what comes into the picture is um, we have a service called Ansible Lightspeed with IBM Watson Code Assistance. So basically, this service would help us to write a playbook um, to ease our pain of writing a play playbook. You don't need to remember as many as before. You, pro you just need to have some understanding of what you want to achieve, right? Normally, the system we, we understand is that install a package, turn on the service, and set some configurations and stuff like that. So um, now I'm going to do a demonstration using the Lightspeed um, So um, this service is running in cloud. And so what, we, what I'm going to demonstrate would be basically use VS Code to author a playbook and using the Lightspeed service to help me with that. Oh. So this is the playbook. And uh, like, I, like I have shown you, the playbook has, con it has some tasks you want to write. And I'm not going to into the detail on the VARs or the infantry yet. I'm just going to show you when I have set up a playbook, I want to do some of the actual task writing. How can the Lightspeed service help me? So in order to use the service, you, service, you need to config um, the VS Code. The first of all, you need to install a um, a plugin which is called Ansible. If you go to the VS Code plugin uh, uh, catalog, you can find it, Ansible, plug Ansible plugin. Once you install it, then you come to the settings to set it up. If you go to the settings, and then you, it's too many of them to look at. You just need to type in Lightspeed to search for those meaningful settings for the Lightspeed. And what you really need to do is to provide the Lightspeed URL. The cloud service one I'm using now is in, it's pretty easy, at least for me, c.ai.ansible.redhat.com, okay? Now, you enable, you want Lightspeed to be enabled, and you also want the Lightspeed service with Watson Co-Assistant to give you inline suggestions, then you check this box as well. Um, now, if you come to the plugin again, there will be a connect button, so once you, uh, wait, let me make sure I got the, uh, 
Okay. So you will use the browser to do a authentication. So this is a service um, already, I have already logged into the Red Hat SSO that have an account with uh, Red Hat that has the license purchased and enabled. Now what I need to do is to enable the uh, VS Code to use that session to talk to the Lightspeed service. And open up. Okay. So now you see that I have the uh, Lightspeed uh, login successful. Uh, I'm using, let's go back to the playbook here that I'm want to try to write. So here, the playbook, remember that I have shown you, we have the first line, it's the, a description that is for human consumption, right? So basically here in, the, in this name, I'm typing my intention. I want to install Postgres server package, right? Now, before you have to remember which module, right? And then parameters. But now what I need to do is just really hitting the enter of it. And if you see this light, the light speed, there's a spinning here means that it's trying to do, okay, so the service come back to me with a um, recommendation. And if I like this, I could just tap it to accept it. Okay, so now this is basically tell, uh, done the work for me. It tell me which module to use. Use the Ansible built-in dot package. And it also tell me that which parameter, what parameters to use. Use the name, which would be the Postgres server, uh, and then also make sure the state is present. So this is essentially like what I would I, you, I will be doing by, oh, go back to the Google or go back to the Ansible to look up for the modules and stuff like that. But now the Lightspeed would do it for me. Um, this is for people who have more years of experience, it might be easy for you. But for people who just start the journey, this is a lot helpful, right? So this is just one demonstration of a simple task. The next, there's another one that will allow us to do is to uh, create multiple tasks. Say, if, if I don't want to type one by one, dash name, blah, 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 what I could do is with a comment line and then write down what I want to do. For example, do initial Postgres config and start a service and allow the traffic through the file, file wall. So here, basically, I'm comment inside this comment using the separator of the ampersand. I'm telling the Lightspeed to, hey, help me generate tasks that accomplish this work. So I'm gonna hit, I hit enter, and then the Lightspeed service will be uh, called, and then it will try to figure out what you wanna do. And you see that it now come back to me with three tasks. I could tap to accept it, and you see that this is doing some kind of uh, using the same some modules to achieve what I ask it to do. Basically, the first one is to do initial Postgres configuration. So it will use this module, um, Ansible built-in command, and then apply these parameters. And then the second one will be start a service. And then this is the module. You know, same thing with what I just have shown you inside the snipe pad, inside the slide deck. And the last one will be opening up the firewall. So yeah, here it come back. At this moment, the the version, this cloud version, support up to maximum ten tasks. So you type in all you want inside a comment line, hit enter, it will come back to you. And obviously, this is AI based generated um, uh, code for you. You might not like the, all the thing, but you could take the initial version, accept it, and then do modification if you want to do it. All right. Um, and the Lightspeed actually would take the whole f context into consideration. And sometimes the, 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 the VARS usage, it would try to follow what you have already established before inside of, in, in, in the file, inside the context, and come back with as possibly customized for you as possible. And then obviously you can adjust after accepting it. So this is the Lightspeed service that is uh, available now in the cloud service. Um, but obviously, nice things always come with some kind of catch. 
oops, uh, a little bit uh, explanation on what ha has happened behind the scene. When we hit the enter, when we type up the so-called Ansible task description and then you hit enter, the VS Code extension will send a request to the service, which is the Ansible Lightspeed cloud service. And then there's an API endpoint called completions. And that endpoint basically telling the end, what, hitting that, that endpoint basically is asking for, hey, give me predictions, help me with this. And what the Lightspeed service will be talking to is a IBM cloud service, which is the Watson Co. Assistance. And that cloud service basically is, has an AI model that already been trained with many of these Ansible code and then with some um, proprietary um, optimization. For example, it will ensure that the conventions are appropriate and also it will make sure that you are using the latest best practice code of Ansible. For example, sometimes uh, a few years ago, some of the modules or usage has been um, uh, uh, has been rated as risky. Now, this IBM Watson service would definitely try to give you the best practice that would avoid those kind of risk. And then the recommendations will come back to you. There's another service uh, I haven't sh I, I forgot to show you, but here, if you look at the there's a terminal here. Um, I'll show this one more time. So let me do one more time here. What I'm trying to show you is that here, the Ansible tab, it will show you where these code comes from. Once I accept it, see, now it will show you that we use a task play, task play, which is called install the Postgres server. And this particular recommendation comes from people's contribution. And we try to credit people who has written this code and shared with the public. And here you can see it comes from uh, Rick. I, I think this guy who helped is Rick and then a couple others. And it will show you where this code is coming from. It comes from Galaxy. Galaxy is the Ansible, like a GitHub for Galax for Ansible. It you allow you to share code with the public. And it gives you all the details where it comes from license and, and the score, right? This is the 0 0.96, means that very likely the code is coming from the first one here, okay? So this is, in, in our terminology, we call it a content match, basically, once you accept the recommendations, the VS Code will send another request to our cloud service tell, asking that, hey, I got these recommendations. Can you tell me who contributes to potentially contribute to this code? And the uh, Lightspeed would, again, hit the Watson service and come back to what you have just seen, the three, uh, the three references that this code is coming from. So, Red Hat, it's kind of root itself in the open source community, and we try to, as, be as, as best as possible, to credit people with your hard work and your contribution here. Um, so, for what I've just seen, or for what I've just shown you, what we need is a VS Code, we need Ansible extension, and we also need a license for the Ansible automation platform, and also for the IBM Watson. Uh, code existing. So you have to pay for it, right? Obviously, if you some some already tried it, probably your company paid for these license. Now, a good news for the open source community is that now you could uh, build your own on your laptop on or on one of your server that has a GPU running on it. And what we're going to do is to and we actually just open source this particular uh, Ansible service repo just last week. We have done some work, try to you know prepare it as nice as possible with uh, documentation so that you could, everyone, you have internet, you could try to get on it and try to build it on your own. All right. So uh, the project name is called Ansible AI Connect, and we have a new logo for it. Um, so 
this is a little bit kind of high level architecture. The green box is where this AI connect, Ansible AI connect is, uh, it, it is, um, it, um, the, the, all the components is inside this AI Connect is doing is equivalent to the Ansible Light, ser light Speed service that you have just seen that I have demonstrated. Um, and the other, another part of the system would be the, the blue box. That would be the AI model server. Um, in the commercial one, that was the IBM Watson. Uh, but now all these components are, you could use existing open source uh, packages to do the work. Uh, inside the Ansible AI Connect service, you can see we support uh, different AI model clients. It just it lists three, but you can have any number of you any number of model clients that you want to support. Um, the all these model clients will be connecting to a AI model server, and then each of the model server, if it's capable, it can accommodate multiple models. For example, different tunes, different train. Uh, trained uh, models you could use. Um, of a box, the, the, if you go to repo as of now, we have these uh, supported model servers uh, or the client for, for the servers that you could use. The first one obviously is the IBM Watson Coassistant and then the Olama that you, have anyone used Olama before? Okay, we have some. And if you have used llama.cpp, similarly, you could use that, yep. Um, and then there are two more generic clients in the box, gRPC and HTTP. If there are any server that can talk, AI model server can talk these protocols, it, you could configure it to talk to you know, those uh, servers. Um, now, what the next step will be done by my teammate, Carol to demonstrate how to set it up in a laptop. I have a laptop here. It's a um, it's a MacBook, and it has the system part man and also a M1 GPU on it that could do some kind of GPU workload here. Yeah, I'll give the time to. Fill up. show you how to easily run uh, Lightspeed on your own computer without any additional problems. So as you, as you can see, all you need is Python, it's Podman or Docker, it depends on your preferences. You can choose your own model server and of course we will use the same uh, Ansible plugin as we used before, just reconfigure it to our uh, own local host uh, system. So uh, there are, we will already prepare it, most of it because it just you don't have time much time. So we already download everything, download dependencies, download the model, and also also already working all uh, variable environment variables. I just want to say as you that what we configured. It's all in README, and the most important one for us today is the first three. It's how the model server is configured. It's where it is, it's the port, and it's what the type of the server we are using. And James was talking about uh, all of them we are supporting right now. And the last one, it's actually model name. So if the server supports several models, we can just uh, change the model name very easily inside of the server or in the side of the VS Code uh, plugin as well. So what we will do, we will deploy and, and let's see how it works. Uh, okay, so we are opening uh, our Podman and we can see that nothing is running right now. We are opening our command line and we have our repository with README. 
So in our readme, we can find all the dependencies you need, and we will go straight to the our model server. To run model server, we just use the same command as in readme. You can see it running. And we already, as I said, prepared everything you need to, uh, to execute the server. Do not waste time right now. And also, we need to write to run our Lightspeed service locally. So let's do it in the separate window. Right, like this. So right now, we have a local server, and we have a local model server, which are connected to each other. And now we are going to the last part, which is uh, configuring VS Code. It is the same VS Code as you can see, the same plugin. You can remove it for now. And we will log out. And now we are going to configure our local server. We go into the same settings. We go into this section. Same late speed section. It's localhost 8000. So that's pretty it. We already configured our extension to use our own server. So let's go to playbook, this command, and. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, we need to re log in, of course. So we already on our local server. We can see the local host here and string for it. Let's log in. Yeah. So it's asking authorization, the same way as before. And now we are connected to our server, our local server. So you can see that there are some authorizations coming in the in the server log. And now when I press this button, uh, press enter. You will see the same gears as before on light speed, and you will see that the uh, our uh, AI model server will start working, and then it will pre provide some feedback, and we will see the feedback in our VS Code. So let's let's try it. I'm pressing Enter, so we can see that gears running. We can s we probably saw that. It was moving, and we have 200 answer from our, and I did it. <laughs> so, sorry, and let's try one more time. So, everything happens, and we can see our suggestion right from the our uh, local run. Oh, absolutely locally, we have local server, we have local model server, and everything is running without internet connection or anything, and we just. We can accept it just as we did before, and we are good to go. So I guess it's. Um, yeah, sure. Yeah, so so I, if you remember, I, I shown you, right, there are two service endpoints, API endpoint. One is for the code generation called completion. The other one is called content match. So for the local version, the content match won't work yet because basically what it does is that you will need to compile an index based on the a data set that you have trained your model. And then basically the service, the content match is doing is that hit the index by providing those recommendations. So this is open source, so you could build your own. Um, because that all the, master, the model we are using for demonstration has not been tuned to all the specifically Ansible playbooks. And you could, if you pay attention to it, the package being recommended, it's quite different too, right? So it, it shows that, you know, commercial version, they have done some work in it. You know, they want to make some money, they have to make it up to enterprise standard. They put in more engineering, engineering work to it. For the open source version, it's up to us to customize it. We could do our own training, right? If you go to Google around, you could find a lot of 
training tutorials. We don't have time here, otherwise we could demonstrate that. So you could collect your own Ansible playbooks. Some of them are on Galaxy or someone will allow you to use, you could use this playbook to do your own training. And then your prediction will come back much, much better. Right? And if your, cop, your, your company has a lot of playbooks, you could train those playbooks for your own usage. A nice thing about it is that then you also can keep it to yourself. If you don't want your playbook to be um, seen by others or your, your queries, your requests, you want to keep it to your own company, then this is a kind of version that you already make use of. Okay? Any other questions? Use the what? type of licenses. The Ansible itself is GPL, so uh, if, if it was just something which is uh, BSD or maybe MIT or DSL for that matter, it might not be in line with the Ansible license itself. So uh, is the suggestion accounting for this situation? Let me take comments. So, so the question is about whether the license is, yeah, is using, um, well, what, so okay, I'm a law. I'm not a lawyer, so that would be hard for me to understand or even answer or understand it. So basically, it's a question about for commercial version, what kind of license is being used or inspected. So for example, if I make a code in my playbooks and I, let's say I license them as GPL or MIT, is the recommendation taking that in context? Right. So I don't get GPL code in my MIT code or opposite. Right. So. Okay. Um, Right, so I, I think I think I, I get a gist because Copilot got into trouble, right, by giving you code that is not properly licensed. So what I can tell you is that commercial version, my belief is that the license is being taken care of. But I cannot go into detail because I'm not I'm lawyer I'm not a lawyer and I can't. Okay. What Lightspeed currently does, the, the commercial one, it, it actually informs you of the license based on which this suggestion is made. But uh, this whole thing is a gray area by now. How exactly you are um, using the content that is licensed underneath, um, it's like no, nobody will, would tell you right now, lawyers or not, this is this is an evolving area still. And Lightspeed will only give you the three topmost things. It doesn't mean that it will base the suggestion just on these three topmost things. It will base on, mo on more. It's just the three most relevant are there. So yeah, so again, I cannot tell you whether whatever that is correct or not, okay? So just take it for your reference and then Go back to your lawyer if, if this is uh, something very serious about you, okay? Um, any other questions? Oh, out of time. So we're done. So if you have any other questions, I'll be here. Me and Carol will be here. You can talk to us, all right? Thank you so much for coming.